about you guys? How's everyone doing today? Oh yeah, I can eat a lot of rice. I fucking love rice, man. Simple carbohydrates, oh, so good. Graham, can you say hi to my dying sister? She's a big fan. Um, Jesus. Uh, y yeah. Well, I hope everything turns out all right. And that's tr true. Hi, Wyatt. Hey, Wyatt, uh, some of the accounts that you talked about on Christmas are here. You should say hi to them. You should, you gotta send me your presentation so I can send it to them. You look like the exact same age from two years ago. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, whoops. Um, it's pretty similar. I am a different age, though. Shockingly. Uh, oh, time to talk. Yeah, man, let's catch up. Are you still, you're still in town, right? That's, ah, oh, oh, man, it's been ages. I miss you guys. Hey, Graham, do you mind saying hi? Yes. Hi, Elena. Hello, World Traveler 17. What is your January 1st news? This is exciting. Um, oh, this is fun. I remember why I do this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Could I have a summer of 85? I would do it. I would do it. Um, I think Caleb's here too. Caleb, you would do that, right? That would be fucking awesome. Can you imagine? I don't think it would be summer of 85, though. It would be, it would have, it wouldn't be one year later. It would have to be many years later, I think. Although that, <laughs> Caleb, we might have some trouble getting you in there. <laughs> How was your happy new year? I am not doing that <laughs> this year. Nope, I'm, I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's, we're n there is no new year. It is just continuing. There's no divider. Um, summer of 83 only. Yeah, we gotta do summer of 83 so Caleb can be there. Because it wouldn't be the same without him. So the whole several months I've known you and heard you were in Star Girl, I thought you were talking about the TV show. Um, that was, so, I auditioned for the movie Star Girl, and I got it, uh, and then, like, before, I think, before, or it might, no, it was after I got back from filming it, because that was a couple months, uh, I got back from filming it, and I got an audition that said, hey, here's an appointment for Stargirl, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Is there a sequel already? Do you, I, you think I would have heard about it? This was a couple weeks after we finished filming, and that was how I found out that there was another freaking show called Stargirl, and I auditioned for both of them. Only I wanted them. Um, so yeah. I feel like I, I can't watch it out of spite, you know? Uh, we need a Discord promo? I have a Discord server, but you're gonna have to go to my Twitch channel and then to my Discord server from there. Please don't subscribe to my Twitch channel. I never go on it. <laughs> I really need it takes two on Twitch. Oh, you saw that on my Steam profile. I d I told Toby about that game. I told him I wanted to play it with him a few months ago, and he got it for me for Christmas. Uh, I got him Bannerlord. Um, so we're going to play that together. Notice me, Graham. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, if you're going to subscribe, I'm not going to tell you my Twitch channel. Please don't subscribe. Don't subscribe is a waste of your money. <laughs> um, sir, please, I need answers. What would you do... If when you okay, so he said yes would go. Uh, ugh, that's a tough one. See, the thing is, it's all about, you gotta, that's a tough one. Because I want to say, you know, yes, yeah, simple, but it's not that simple. It's a really, <laughs> question doesn't make any sense. Please, oh God, you guys, no. 
I memory Dylan Kingwell. I love Dylan Kingwell. I, was, I thought I broke Instagram for a second. I went skating a couple weeks ago and I saw the Dylan Kingwell. It was amazing. I love that guy. Um, can anyone paste an invite link to the Discord server? Mr. Graham, are you making spaghetti? I'm not. They tried to convince me to, but I'm not going to. Uh, I had pasta yesterday, so. Um, oh, I gotta wash my dishes. Instantly regretting making a Twitch live stream? No, I don't regret it. I just can't do it right now. Hi, Marissa. It told, it told me you joined. Um, so, what's new? How's everyone doing? Uh, wow. That is a huge honor. Uh, hey, it just gave me a notification on the bottom of my screen that said, uh, Raffi Smith joined. And wow. That is, that's a great guy. I love that guy. <laughs> Um, what's for dinner? Uh, oh, hey, <laughs> how's it going, guys? Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do easy, it's an easy thing, like some stir fry rice and like some frozen spring rolls. It's, it tastes really good. Um, you dislocated your knee on Saturday. Sorry to hear that. Um, man, I'd imagine that was painful. Um, sorry to hear that. Okay. All right. Oh, God. Life is just a never-ending cycle of using dishes and then washing them and then using them and it never fucking ends. We live in hell. <laughs> Why can you stay on forever? 39 days. Where is Toby? Is he with you? Uh, he's in the city, but he's not with me. Uh, he's not here with me, no. I can reach over here. No one here. No one here. Um, not gonna share the recipe. I don't know how to cook. <laughs> Invest in paper plates. You know what? I would consider it if it wasn't... I would. I would consider if it wasn't, you know, the environment. I you think they're... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite food spaghetti. That's why people are telling you to make it. Uh, Sophia. <laughs> um, if you crochet me something, is there any? Yes, if you crochet me something, which oh my god, <laughs> that would be. In, uh, <laughs> don't have to. Um, yeah, then message me. I'll I'll tell you. Um. Wow. The really, really big questions. Really big questions today. Wait, what's your opinion on a tick tick boom? Uh, finally, I found another person who knows the movie. Uh, I was very, very, very impressed, uh, especially with Andrew Garfield. I mean, I, I expected it to be a, a good movie. Um, apparently he didn't sing at all before that, and he just trained really hard, and I never would have known. He's, he did phenomenal. Uh, uh, no, he did so good. Uh, also just Jonathan Larson. We share the same birthday, me and Jonathan Larson, and Toby, my twin brother. Um, uh, so good. That guy is a, was a master. Spaghetti! <laughs> Malcolm, I love you. I love you. I am so excited to play D&D. I miss Lehman. I miss the Jindaki. Oh my god! Everyone! Everyone, look at what Malcolm made. Um, this is my D&D character that we're playing next week. Uh, I am so fucking excited. Um, wow. Woo! 
Home. Have you seen Spider-Man No Way Home? Yes. So good. I know we're technically past the spoiler wall. Like, it's been three weeks, I think. But let's... I, everyone should go see it. It's worth it. Um... Hi, oh, thank you. What do you guys want to talk about? Um, what's new? What's new with you guys? We need sleep reminders for people in a different time zone. Hey, if you live in a different time zone, for example, I think it's UTC. Uh, if it's very late at night, you should go to sleep. Oh my god, Farron, hi, how are you? Hi, Liv. Oh my god, you guys. Oh, everyone's here. I miss you guys. Farron, it's been so long. Uh, how are you? Um, Liv, I'm very glad, I'm very glad you got to have uh, Christmas at home. That's very exciting. I'm actually gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do tea tonight because I've got to get up early tomorrow. Um, I don't know which one I'm gonna do yet, but if you have an idea, then I should. Um, oh, let's. Well, friend, we're we're gonna catch up, okay? It's been way too long. Um, Hey, I mean, you miss a cool little shout out? Uh, yeah, Hardly Famous Productions. I'm really excited to, I'm excited to work with you guys. Uh, uh, yeah. I, oops, sorry. Oh, I fucked up Instagram. Um, that is a cool Instagram account to follow. Look up Hardly Famous Productions. Um, what's your favorite Japanese food? Uh, I am a big fan of teriyaki. It's just one of my favorite foods, period. Um, oh my god. A Christmas a painting. <laughs> um, oh my god. Okay, you have no idea how excited I am. Uh, Liv, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> um, when it, uh, are, did it get, I heard there were new restrictions, but I don't know if gymnastics got delayed. I think, are we still on the 9th? Still wait for Christmas. Oh, you're doing Christmas on January 7th? That's smart. I, we should have done that. <laughs> we kind of just didn't do anything instead. Um, Okay, oven is preheated. Uh, what I'm gonna do, that first, then that, and then that, right after that, and then that. Just thinking through, just thinking through. I gotta time it right. What instruments did, um, Favorite Pokemon? I think Manaphy. I, I don't know. I don't remember why. Um, I kind of just picked it when I was younger. And I stand by it. Manaphy's a great Pokemon. Oh, shit. I gotta be productive. Um, why can't we stay forever? Shan's going to sleep? Good. Good. All right, hey, did everyone, I'm not telling you where I live in Francois, sorry. Canada, if that's what you wanna know, I'm Canadian. Uh, did everyone see the telescope that launched on Christmas? Um, very, very exciting. I, you have <laughs> no idea how many times, I was gonna go live on fucking Christmas Eve and just tell people, how excited they should be. And then I realized no one would fucking watch it because it was Christmas Eve. Um, so I didn't. 
And then I was going to do the same thing on New Year's Eve. Uh, and I realized no one was going to fucking watch it. Uh, so I didn't. So right now, I need to tell you guys, I everyone uh, has got to look at the James Webb Space Telescope. It is... I talked... I posted a story or two about it. But I need to be clear. It is... I think it's the most exciting to thing thing to happen in my lifetime, at least so far. Like I'm not exaggerating. It it straight up is. Um, it's really it's gonna be fucking insane if everything works, and it could still go wrong, uh, technically. But to this point, everything has gone perfectly so far. What's the point of the telescope? Well, <laughs> um, it's a time machine. Pretty much. That's one of the things I'm most excited about. Um, Hubble, in 2003, uh, they were doing an experiment. They didn't know what they were going to see. They decided to take a picture uh, of a small square in the sky uh, where we didn't know of any stars. We thought it was just a sort of blank spot. Uh, so we didn't know what we were going to see if we took a picture there. It could have just been darkness. Uh, But they took a picture, they had an exposure of like, oh god, I think like six months or something. Uh, and it returned what's now known as the deep field picture, the Hubble deep field. Uh, and that picture, man, I'm going to get it printed out on my wall. Uh, it, a lot of what we know about where the universe has come from... Uh, is like directly from those pictures, you know? Uh, and so they designed a telescope specifically to take more of those pictures. Uh, and that's the James Webb Space Telescope. They've been working on it for like 15, 20 years. It was originally supposed to launch in 2007, uh, but they only got one shot to launch it. So they delayed uh, to make sure everything was perfect and it launched Christmas morning this year. So, a little over five months, I think, uh, or five and a half months, until we get to see the first pictures from it. Uh, but man, there is nothing I'm more excited about right now. What's it called? The James Webb with two Bs Space Telescope. <sighs> all right, how's, all right. You guys ask weird questions. <laughs> Sorry, I hope you don't mind that I'm being productive at the same time. This is the best you get. <laughs> um, oh, I got myself a Christmas present. <laughs> Did you know you're an Aquarius? Uh, you know, uh, I was wondering what my horoscope, and thank God IMDB was there for me. Uh, <laughs> to tell me. I, I sometimes forget still, and I have to go look it up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any pets? I'm gonna get a cat at some point. Guys, I'm not cooking anything like real. I'm just making sustenance. It's just so I don't starve to death. Um I need to check your <laughs> Um here from Argentina. Love you. Um, someone asked if I'd ever heard of Argentina. Of course I've heard of Argentina. I've never been there, but I know where it is. I got a skateboard and name it pomegranate. That's awesome. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh... Do you like washing dishes? God, no. Uh, do you like astrology? Uh, zodiac signs, horoscope? <laughs> God, no. Uh, no, there are a few things I dislike more. <laughs> do you get... Oh, do you get... I thought that said fishing. Do you get nervous while fishing? <laughs> um, well, filming... Uh, rarely. Sometimes. I'll get nervous before. 
but not while I'm filming. Geography master, know where Argentina is? I know where every country is. Oh, I haven't practiced, practiced it in a long time. But there was a couple weeks I memorized every country. What do you think Dylan is learning Spanish? He's fantastic. I heard him speak Spanish. One of my uh, dearest friends is uh, fluent in Spanish, and she was we she was with me when I saw Dylan at the skating rink, um, and they were just fucking you know like it was insane. He's so good. You ever consider making music? Yeah, I will at some point. I I've been doing music for longer than I've been doing acting. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever release it under my name. Uh, partially because I don't want to be like the, oh, this person did this and now they're going to release music. Um, uh, but also just because, you know, I want it to be something I'm proud of. And, and writing music is still very new to me. So I'm not very good at it yet. Um, but I hope to be. One day. Sing, 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 sing. You know, I've said that I would for a while. Um, I don't know if that's... I don't know. I'm sure one, one of these days I'll go on live and I'll really feel like singing and maybe you'll get something. Uh, I don't think today. I've got, I've got to make food. Um, oh, Lydia Elliot music. Wow. <laughs> Can I speak Japanese? You may. Um, <laughs> I cannot, though. Do you like Olivia Rodrigo? I, she seems very nice. I've never listened. I've heard her songs played on the radio, but I haven't listened to them, like, actually. Um, but they're really good. What is the reason for you make live in your kitchen? Uh, because <laughs> it's very hard to convince me to go live otherwise. <laughs> Um, yeah. Favorite Minecraft block? Ooh, okay. Uh, like aesthetically or like game design wise? Um, great question. I don't know. I was really excited about the uh, calcite, I think it was called, in the new update, um, aesthetically, because it's like diorite, but pretty. Um, what's your favorite song at the moment? Uh, okay, you know my, I think some of you know my actual favorite song, but right now, one of my favorite songs to listen to is You Go Down Smooth by Lake Street Dive. Just best overall Minecraft luck. Um... Uh, redstone dust. <laughs> I used to be, that was my, that was my older brother and, and, uh, Toby, they would play survival mode and I only played creative. I did redstone stuff. I was a fucking nerd is what I'm saying. <laughs> Graham, what was the inspiration behind your Minecraft username? Wyatt, are you still here? Is Wyatt still here? I don't... Can I... Can I check? Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Well, I can see who's on. Um. I... Me and my two brothers, we have we have very similar Minecraft usernames. Hmm. Hmm. Drop your Spotify user. <laughs> you can find it. <laughs> I believe in you. I really believe in you. <laughs> I think if you look for it, you can find it. It's just my fucking name. <laughs> uh, Bryn, uh, Colm, I want to meet you. 
Uh, did you watch Book of Boba Head? I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I want to, but I haven't yet. I don't know if I could tell you a favorite movie from 2021. I don't, uh, oh my god, you found my Spotify already? Yeah, that's a good playlist. Almost a thousand songs on it. I don't know what's going to be the thousandth, uh, thousandth song. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Numbers on the front. Back your credit card. Um, yeah, uh, uh, five, three, one, eight, zero, zero, eight. That's, that's all of them. Put that in your calculator. Turn it upside down. Elliot. <laughs> um, do you have a TikTok? No, and I will never get one. And I think everyone here should delete it. It's malware. designed to be bad for you, and it's also stealing your data. That's why I don't have Instagram. That's why I go live so rarely, is because I fucking, I don't even have Instagram. I block it from being on my phone, uh, and then every couple weeks I'll, like, re-enable everything so I can go live. Um... It's very bad. It, it's a precedent you don't want to set. Uh, there's nothing wrong with TikTok people. I really like the culture on the app and like the sort of, yeah, like the culture about it. It's really cool. There's been some really cool stuff on there. Uh, it's just, it just needs to be a different app, man. It's just a terrible, terrible app. Uh, dangerous. I was addictive and I'm okay with it being malware if I get fleeting enjoyment. Uh, but if everyone's okay with it, then it's really bad. Um, so many times I've heard this monologue. Well, yeah, I'm consistent. I'm not going to get it. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects? Yeah, nothing I can tell you about though, but some really fun stuff. Um, you should still be in, you should be in Stranger Things, you give out the 84 vibe. If Stranger Things wanted to hire me, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I never auditioned for it. The first time it came around, I didn't get an audition. Has been washing dishes for 20 minutes now. <laughs> and I've washed three dishes. Oh, fuck, wait. I got one more to do. You missed the cast of Stargirl? Of course. I fucking love those guys, man. I wish I could see them, like, every day, you know? They're so cool. Of course I miss those guys. Uh, tips on pursuing acting for people with no experience? Ooh, uh, it's a dangerous profession to get into. Uh, if you're really passionate about it, uh, then I would say uh, connect with an agent uh, or manager uh, and work up from there uh, using their advice. Uh, but if you don't feel very passionate about it, get a stable job. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> uh, don't ignore my questions or I cry. I'm sorry, I don't know what your questions were. Have you been hanging out with Grace? We live in different countries. <laughs> what time is it there? It's 8.40. A favorite brother? Um, oh... Um, favorite brother, favorite brother, no, can't do it, big, <laughs> uh,
You should be like like Johnny Storm. What's that from? No wasting water. I was washing my hands. The snowman boy? How's Toby? Um, oh, he's in town now. It's really nice. I hadn't seen him in a long time, but he's back. So we get to see it. I like your sweater. Thank you. I literally, like, six months ago, man, I, I've had this fleece for years and years, and I would only wear it when I was going skiing. Uh, that's it. Um, and then I went, not camping, but I went to Haida Gwaii for a couple weeks. Uh, and it was, uh, I wore this thing every day. I fell in a fucking mud pit. I got out, rinsed it in the river, and I was clean. Uh, and it was warm. I fucking love, I live in fleeces now. I love them. Uh, it was a very quick flip. Um, do you have a cat? No, but I want to get one. Uh, if you could change something about your past, would you change something? Wow, that's a hell of a question. I don't know if we're there yet. Um, I'd like to be at a point where I don't want to, but yeah, of course. Um, what the Aubrey song do you like, Bestie? Um, great question. I love the Aubreys, uh, especially the drummer. Um, I, I, what is my favorite Aubrey song? Um, I don't know. I have f four from the new album in my playlist, and I've been meaning to add more. Um, but I don't remember which ones. I stan, I don't stan many people, but I stan Malcolm Craig from the Aubreys. <laughs> Do you want a cat? You have like 40 cats? Oh my god, Vlad, you are my hero. <laughs> Would you rather stand on ice barefoot for five minutes or tickle on your feet for 10 minutes? Terrible question. You get a zero out of 10 for that question, uh, but tickled for 10 minutes, because that wouldn't fucking damage, that wouldn't freeze my skin off. Uh, do you know speaking Tagalog? I, I, I don't. I wish I spoke more languages than I do. It's just not, I, I have a really hard time with it. <laughs> uh, can you tell me why you always ignore my questions? There are, I can't, I, I can't answer all of them. I can't talk that quickly. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Can we still call you dead ham? Or are you now active ham? I've... I don't know if I ever consented to either of those. Um, no dogs are better and more loyal. Uh, I love dogs. I love dogs. But I don't have the energy to live with a dog. I need, I need a pet that I can chill with. You know? And I don't have to take for a a walk and like you know I could just say like hey how's it going and then we could just chill in the same room for a couple hours and that's hanging out you know um was your favorite oh I thought that said Muppet subject uh when I was younger I don't know I never really liked I saw you on TikTok, fascinatingly and inspiringly popular. That's the level of vibes we need in this pandemic. More power. That's terrifying. I don't know who was posting about me on TikTok or if it was fascinating and inspiringly, what was it? Popular? Wow, that's news to me. Um, oh. Penny. <laughs> I want to meet that cat. I'm going to meet that cat one day. I will. I swear to God, I will. I think I'm going to visit Toby in Boston at some point when he goes back. You recommend songs? Yeah. I've given you one song so far. I might have to scroll up to find it. Oh! 
Un <laughs> Unleash your lawsuit. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, what's your travel plans for 2022? None so far. We're still in a pandemic. Uh, although, actually, I did just say that I was probably going to go to Boston at some point. That would be uh, just to visit one or two people. I'm not going to finish washing all my dishes. I'm going to wash the ones I'm going to use. There's only two things left. Look, I'm faster at washing dishes, but it makes a lot of noise. And I have to be entertaining, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guinea pigs are also cool. Uh, yeah. I like guinea pigs. All right, rice time. People notice you? Uh, not in Vancouver, which is nice. Uh, it's happened a couple times, but only only once here. And it was years ago, it was right after Good Doctor came out. Wash your rice, of course. Um Yeah, you rinse it rinse it twice. Are you nineteen, right? Yes. Uh yeah, it's funny because I can, <laughs> I don't want to be a bad influence, but like in Canada, when you're 19, you can do whatever the fuck you want except rent a car. Uh, like I can go out and buy weed if I want to. There's a dispensary like a block away from my house. Um, and I know that's not legal everywhere in the world, so I'm not going to encourage it, but like I can. <laughs> Um, which is funny. I like, uh, <laughs> I like it here. <laughs> I've been told I look like you. Um, is that you in your profile picture? Do you like orange rice more right, white rice? Orange rice, orange rice, orange rice. Like... Don't wash your rice? What? No, I'm gonna wash the rice. You gotta get the starch off. Come on. Um. Why is someone telling me to not wash my rice? I like your laugh. <laughs> laugh more often. <laughs> uh, make me. <laughs> you get a vaccine? Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting right now uh, for when they'll let me get my booster shot, but I've got two so far. Um, everyone, get your vaccines. I really... Hey, are there any anti-vaxxers here? <laughs> Really curious. Um, cause go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, vaccine <laughs> king. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. A little bit more water. I got a literally a fucking $15 rice cooker from Superstore. I love it. I use it like every day. <laughs> Not every day. I'm healthier than that. 
Um, but like three or four times a week. If you could, would you? No. Straight up, never. <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot to do the other thing first. I'm okay. It'll be okay. We're gonna be okay, guys. We're gonna be okay. Uh, tell us a joke and we will give you a candy. Um, shit. Uh... Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, too much pressure. Remember the shower curtains of me. Taken off Amazon. Oh, that's tragic. I really hope you got them. Apparently they're limited edition. Uh, where did you film some ready for? Was it hot wherever you filmed? Well, it was like probably an hour from where I am right now. It was in Langley, BC. Uh, how do you get along with Judah Lewis? Man, it has been ages since I've talked to that guy. I fucking love that guy. Uh, he's the best. Uh, I don't think Taylor got the shower curtains now. How long have you been doing gymnastics? Wow, you guys are quick with that. Um, not quick enough. It's been like... Mm, seven or eight months, probably. Um, so... Yeah. Good catch, though. Good catch. Uh, I would give you a house tour, but it's a fucking mess, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> How's your Quidditch? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, weather's been pretty terrible. Uh, how's he? Uh, but next practice is on the 9th. So I'm, I think, 9th. Whatever the next Sunday is. So I'm excited to get back into it. Um, it's going good though. How are your backflips and tap dancing going? Oh, tap dancing I think might be delayed because we have a COVID spike here. Um, backflips? Pretty good. Pretty good. I can do them now. I, I'm just kind of working on making them look better. I love winter. Who's shit talking winter? Winter's the best. Except for like this seasonal depression. <laughs> um, that's not as fun. Who's your favorite character in Harry Potter? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say Cedric. I, I say that for no reason in particular, except that I'm also a Hufflepuff. Uh, and Robert Pattinson. You know, what can I say? Sophia's still on? Yeah, hey. <laughs> Look at what I'm making. <laughs> so good, man. They're so good. These are, I think, the best ones. Okay. Oh, God. Life is pain. Those are in for 15, 18 minutes, 18 minutes, 18 minutes. The rice will take 15. Uh, but they will stay warm. It will stay warm. Have you seen Supernatural? I haven't actually. You know, I <laughs> I got offered a role on Supernatural and I had to turn it down because of a scheduling thing with Once Upon a Time. And then they cut the part that overlapped. But I'm still salty about that. 
Um, I want to see your best questions. I want to see your best questions. Give me your best questions. Oh, sorry about that. You guys, these aren't great questions. Oh, game of the year 2021? I haven't played enough this year. Um, although, you know what? One of the games I played years and years ago, years ago uh, like 2014, 2015, I remember it fondly, uh, was Robocraft. And they fucked it up. Uh, that was my favorite game. And they just butchered it. Uh, it's unanimous that they fucked it up. Everyone, like, everyone stopped playing. They just killed the game. Uh, there's no, no, <laughs> uh, beating around the bush. Uh, but because everyone knows that they, that exactly when they killed the game, uh, people have backups of, like, the game files from before then. Uh, and as of a couple weeks ago, people are now running servers. There's one, there's a really, uh, so you can go back and play the game like it was in 2015. And I've been really excited about that. So <laughs> I don't know if it counts as game of the year 2021, but those guys get my vote. Favorite song in 2021. Black Cow, Steely Dan. Uh, these are better questions. Uh, what's your favorite book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Uh... Um, I have a Discord. Yeah, why? You should join my Discord channel. You got. You should join my Discord. You should uh, subscri subscribe on Twitch. <laughs> okay. What is the song you play when you're sad? Good question. Um. I don't know if there's any one in particular. It's just kind of more chill vibes. How can we save people with depression? Wow, that's a hell of a question. Um, um, well, uh, mental health should be treated as seriously as physical health. Uh, there are a lot of things that could be done better, and it's easy to name them all. A lot harder to fix them all. Um, but starting by having, like, mental health issues, like, covered by insurance. Like, therapy should be covered by fucking insurance. It's important. Everyone can benefit from it. Um, uh, yeah, and having access to that. Uh, do you like any weird food combinations? Yeah. Uh, one time I decided I wanted to experiment uh, with the two things I had in front of me, which was hot chocolate and orange soda. So I drank the hot chocolate, held it in my mouth, drank the orange soda, fish around. Really good, actually. Really good. <laughs> Quite good. Um, almost reminiscent of these things. Uh, did you see Tick, Tick, Boom? I did. It was really good. Really good. Very impressed with Andrew Garfield. He's super, he's a really good singer, apparently. <laughs> oh, this was my Christmas present to myself. Fancy ass knife. Now I gotta learn how to use it. What flavors do you hate? Good question. Coconut. It smells nice. I don't want it in my mouth. Um, that might just be a texture thing too. It's it, it's not not stringy, but like that kind of like I don't know. Where'd you get the knife from? 
There's a knife store in Canada called Knifeware. Uh, you can get really nice Japanese knives from there, so I got it. Oh shit! It's the man who made the legend. Oh man, how's it going, bro? How's it going? I'm gonna spot. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys are with me on coconut. Do you like Nutella? Yeah, it tastes good. I won't buy it, like, <laughs> morally. I feel like they spent so long marketing it as a healthy thing, and it's really not. And that kind of pisses me off, so I'm not going to give them money. Um, but it tastes pretty good, because it's sugar. <laughs> sugar tastes good. You have a favorite cologne? Uh, no, but one of my proudest pranks was... Uh, Spraying was going up to my, going up to someone and saying, uh, hey, check out this cologne I got. Uh, and for some reason she believed that I actually got cologne. She was like, you know what? That actually smells really good. Um, <laughs> better than most colognes I've ever smelled. And I was like, that's because it's Febreze. <laughs> um, I literally, <laughs> I literally just fucking did this. <laughs> um... <laughs> it's a bit strong. <laughs> uh, how's life been? Man, it's fucking all over the place. Uh, did you have any... Did, did all of your holiday plans get cancelled? Like, so much COVID, man. It's rough. Um, yeah, how, how's your <laughs> New Year been so far, Mike? How... Oh, food. I forgot I was making food. I didn't forget, but I need to keep remembering. Would you get a tattoo? Yes, I've got some very good ideas, but I kind of, I don't really like, <laughs> I don't know. I have to, my, I make money from being on camera, so I, it might make it more difficult. So I'm kind of holding off for now. Um, but yeah, eventually I'm going to get a tattoo. Do you have Twitter? Yes, I do. Rarely use it. Again, I kind of hate social media. I try and go on it as little as possible. Um, but I do have Twitter. Was playing Sean in the Good Doctor a challenging role? Um, it was challenging because I wanted to do it right. Um, I mean, doing a fucking caricature would have been easy and fucked up. Um, and I, I mean, I never would have done that, but like, so we, we put a lot of work into it is what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm glad we did. Um, so yeah. A tattoo on your leg. I have two on my thighs. Um, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if my leg suits the ones I want to get. The one here, my my first idea, I'm going to get like on my forearm right here so that when I'm playing laser tag, I can see it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Colors your nails today? Uh, they're not painted right now. Um, I've told you guys my favorite song a couple times. I want to see if you remember it. I want to see if someone here remembers it. Um, it's the same one. Oh my god. I mean, you gotta tell him about that fucking... <laughs> I don't even know if he's supposed to. Um, oh... That, I'm so, I don't think I got that one, and I'm so glad. Um. Yo. Ah. All of these guys in my Discord server, it's been on. Knife. Knife. Nice. Um. What's your favorite song by Grace? Uh, good question. I don't know. Um. 
I didn't really listen to her music before I got Stargirl, so I didn't, I wasn't really, like, I heard of her. Um, and at the time, my favorite was Beautiful Thing. I don't know if it still is, although it's still a good song. Oh, so smooth. Watch your fingers. I know how to cut. I know how to cut. Um, this is much safer than the knife I was using before. It was so dull. And it was like, here, I'll show you. It was like this fucking kind as well, so you can't like sharpen it or anything. So it was, you know. Uh, so this is a lot safer. Of course, I'm still being careful, don't worry. What's your favorite Super Tramp song? Okay, yeah, 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 all right. Um, I'm with you. Um, great question. Uh, there are so many good options, and I think it might be Another Man's Woman live at Royal Albert Hall, 1997. Or, um, Gone Hollywood, maybe? There are so many good ones. So many. So, so many good ones. Uh, oh, I dropped all my carrots. I didn't drop all of them. We have so many different types. I showed you two knives. A nice one and the one crappy one I replaced it with. <gasps> it's telling me I have two minutes left before it's kicking me off of Instagram Live. Ah. Oh. Oh, I stepped on the... Hey, you remember when I dropped carrots? <laughs> I just stepped on them. <laughs> Um, oh, that's great. I don't have to do this. Um, okay. Give them to me quick. One, one good last question. That recording is an all-time class. It's fucking phenomenal. It's so good. Um, oh, it's been a while since Dancing in the Moonlight. I listened to it a couple times uh, since then. Uh, we gotta be careful. We don't want to listen to it too much. It came on shelf and I was like, oh, wait, this is a lot. Uh, so we gotta be, we gotta be careful. We're kind of edging the line. Uh, it's your favorite movie? Uh, Scott Pilgrim, I think, or Princess Bride, or Jojo Rabbit, or I don't know. You still talk to? Me? There was a. Can I roller skate? There was originally gonna be a roller skating scene in Summer of '84, but I think they couldn't get the rink. Wow, guys, Jesus, what's the hardest thing you've done in life? Have you found the one yet? Christ, you guys. Wow. Um, City Boy by the Aubreys. Okay, I will. I will. I'll tell, I'll tell Malcolm that it was recommended. Maybe. I don't know if I'll bug him. Um, okay. Do <laughs> a backflip, please, and thank you. Oh, if I was outside, I would go for it. Um, I've got videos. I've got videos of me doing it back. Wait, can I do that? There's only 10 I'm always it's, it's, down. Do we, do we it's, want to it's do your epics screen, and, then, and, then bring, uh, and then bring people back into it and, and sure. we can look at it all in the framework of ethics? Let's do that. Let's I do think that. that's, a good, that's, a good, uh, that's a good plan here. Um, so I guess now we will uh, turn our attention to kind of ethical theories and principles that uh, essentially what, th what they do is they help us to make judgments that define what it means to act in a moral capacity. Hey, Graham, if you want some content, I can do my Christmas stream again. Um, how did Wait, you is this so, why? How did you get on so quickly? I don't know. I was typing. <laughs> did you invite me? There is now? supposed to be a three second countdown before you join. Did but you as, soon as, I, as soon as I pressed the button, you were on. <laughs> it's because I was typing as, as you said it, and then it popped open. So, listen, uh, if, you want, so if you want, glad I, glad I, I can do my this. Christmas talk again. Wow. Um, I want, you should do your Christmas talk, but also, I, I know you, you have some thoughts about ethics and, and philosophy. Before, uh, sure. before you start saying just cool things. Put in that cool. And I've watched yeah. the videos, and that's really cool. Continue now. I just want to say, if you're trying to pander to me, you should talk trash about Quidditch, not. No, literally, I, I, I thought it was very 
interesting because I've never asked Asti to take layers. Hey, why? Really headphones. headphones, please, why? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, lost him okay, I'm here. Oh, he's got headphones now. Oh, lovely. Hello. Yeah. Heard many things. Okay. Um. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but why you're you're you have quite a bit of expertise in um dilemmas and such. Right. As as someone who went through university, I do have a lot of experience on dilemmas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think that's what you mean, though. But yeah, sure. I, I, I'm curious I what you do mean. <laughs> Listen, sometimes um, you got a you got a question like you could either go to bed and be ready for your job tomorrow, or you can make fun of your little brother on stream. Um, I should go to bed. I've got my fucking end test tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Dad was telling me about that. Yeah. Did he take you on my bullshit trick road? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. and I nailed it. I failed my test there. I saw I saw a no entry sign, and I saw that it was a right turn only lane, and I was like, okay. I but it I'm looks right. it looks like you have to go the other hmm. way. Granted, it is fucked up. <laughs> oh, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a, it's it's a on Puget Drive, turn. right? Or something? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in that weird curvy area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are, are you talking about the one at, like, Alma? Yeah, like, it looks like you go, you turn left, but then it's actually a one-way street the other way. Yeah. Never been in Canada and never driven a car, so I'm really, I'm really involved right now. <laughs> I'm on board, guys. All right, let's talk ethics. Let's talk ethics. Sure, what do I talk about? Um, so I was just going to kind of briefly outline basic ethical theories and kind of general categorizations and just what they each consist of. Uh, so that was kind of where, where I was headed with that. Um, and so I was kind of going to look more at modern ethical theories, which mostly can be divided into two categories, the teleological theories and the deontological theory. Um, which, uh, respectively, are the ethics of ends. Deontay of... from the Inferno. <laughs> and the ethics. From... And the ethics. Sorry. Of... Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not letting that go. From the Inferno. Deontay from, the... from, the... <laughs> from that one Inferno. <laughs> Deontay, Fam... you know the guy. Famously, that was by um, oh, that one that one guy VG, right? <laughs> oh. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, no, feel free to interrupt at any time for any of Graham's interjections. Um, but uh, so, so kind of just to briefly explain the two categories, teleological <laughs> theories. Uh, I mean, the root of the word teleo teleological is the Greek word telos, which refers to the end or the goal. And so these theories, uh, teleological theories, they give priority to good over right, and they evaluate actions by the consequences or the goal that they attain. So it's more outcome-based rather than uh, process-based is, is what teleological theories look at. And so the right actions are those that produce the most good or optimize the consequences in that sense. Um, and so that is utilitarianism, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But fundamentally, the, the main theory in that category is utilitarianism. And on the other hand, you have your de 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 deontological theories, which argue for priority of right over good. So in that sense, it is, a, it, again, it's about the process. It's about an action being intrinsically right or wrong, regardless of what the consequences of that action are, regardless of, you know, what, what the result is. And so that, are good. that there are two kind of sub uh, deontological kind of uh, theory categories, and those can in include both duty based ethics and rights based ethics and duty based ethics is a manual of Kant and rights based ethics are a whole variety of things that can, you know, that's a whole other can of worms. Mm. Um, 
but so so those are the main two categories you have your 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 ethics about that that dictate that you know the process is what determines morality and one that dictates that the outcome is what determines morality um, do you speak russian me yeah absolutely not <laughs> I do not speak. I Russian. thought I thought maybe you did, and I forgot. Because <laughs> no, Russian, 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 Russian is not one of them. No. Okay. Um, Sorry. But uh, utilitarianism. So this is the first one we're going to look at. It's a teleological theory. So it is about the end or the goal. Again, one of the consequences-based uh, ethical theories. And so utilitarianism was developed initially by oh, what's his face, uh, Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill, I think. Uh, in like the late 1700s, early 1800s. And so the, the idea of utilitarianism is that the action that is moral is the one that produces the net greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. And so th the reason why it's called utilitarianism is that this good, however we define it, can also be described as utility, as providing some sort of function in society. And Your so game that's theory. why it's referred to as utilitarianism. And so this ethical theory argues that this principle of utility is what it, what is foundationally determines morality and what is right and wrong. And so actions are right in proportion to their tendency to bring about what is referred to as happiness um, and to minimize the extent that they bring about pain or a decrease in happiness. And pain or harm or happiness can be defined in different contexts depending on how you're how you're looking at utilitarianism. So, but but in in all cases, utilitarianism is is it's committed to maximization of good, <laughs> however you define that good. And seems, so again, seems very idealist. It's very idealist, and it's about consequences. So so a utilitarian would say that if you had to kill one person to save two people, you should go ahead and stab that person. See. The, I, I always think back, to, and it's obviously like uh, the, the the story is very clearly about the uh, utilitarianism and whatnot, all of the theory behind that. But um, the ones who walk away from Amalas, um, if you if y'all have read that, you know, um, uh, it's space. It's a short story yeah. where it's essentially, you know, the perfect civilization. Everyone's happy. Everyone's good, except for there is one um starving sickly child that everyone has to go in and like abuse basically and they have to treat this child terribly and um every like child when they reach a certain age has to like go and see the kid and it's like this is the reason why our civilization is so good because this child is suffering and if the child is let free or is it's like allowed to leave this suffering we will no longer have a perfect society and um, it kind of like, it, like obviously, like it's not like a, a realistic scenario, but like it talks at, at the very end. It's like the ones who walk away. It's a pretty realistic scenario. I think that would work a it's lot a, better than anyone wants to admit that, it. That that story is maybe less it's of a human. critique on utilitarianism and more of a critique on how on how our we, society functions. We are Way ignoring too many that. Would be no, no, okay no, absolutely. If they can see that is the, as is the pain of one. Um, like does that make it worth the um like well, sure. if, if the if, like i just i just think about that sure. in a way that and 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 yeah and no these are the ethical discussions that that we have and this is why we have different frameworks by which to look at it because utilitarianism would say yeah no this is great this maximizes the net good for the most number of people so screw that kid yeah right but and, it's like that but the, no. yeah, yeah but utilitarianism i want to know is how I want to know how <laughs> how it equates how it translates between people. If you can make one person uh, really really happy, is that worth? Yeah. Well, what people? you're describing is actually happiness. What you're if you make that is... one kid happy enough, does that justify doing that to everyone else? What, Graham, what you're describing is actually one of the big critiques of utilitarianism. Yes. It's called the happiness pump, where basically if you define no. utility in certain ways. If you have a kid, that will just be really, really happy. That kind of messes up the whole system. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And because utilitarian assumes that we can somehow measure benefits and harms and then add or subtract them from one <laughs> another in a way that is kind of concrete and discrete. 
and mm. so that that's one of its major flaws is it is it's it is not at all flexible and it's why also you'll see it in a lot of business is it, like fundamentally all business is is predicated on on most business at least is predicated on utilitarian principles where everybody's trying to maximize their profit and minimize their loss it's basically converting that idea to an ethical framework would describe utilitarianism and so you can you I'm can gonna... kind of see how we might not fully consider that to be you know, the extent of the story, how we might not consider it to be the be all end all of ethical theories and, and why ultimately we can't consider any one ethical theory to, to dictate all of our decision making. We have to use an integration of all of them to kind of come to our own moral decision. I think people in the chat are kind of getting lost here. So let me, um, let me try to take a step back here. What, uh, what we're talking about when we say utility, it's a very similar thing to like you know, if you've ever heard of game theory or stuff, even stuff in like AI or whatnot, basically the idea is, I think I value this X amount. And the idea is you want to assign a number to every possible thing. Yeah. So like, oh, I think that if I get to go to Hawaii, that's worth a hundred points to me. And I use the word points loosely. Well, yeah. Um, or if I go to, you know, Omaha, that's worth 10 points to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but then is there negative? <laughs> well, Omaha, yes, actually, that's the whole thing. A utilitarian <laughs> might say like, oh, 10 people going to Omaha is the same as the one person going to Hawaii. It's this sort of idea that we can make numbers yeah. uh, work with it. Define every action as having a value. The problems with it, of course, though, are that well, A, people aren't going to agree on those numbers. Uh, not usually the critique, but that's, a, that's part of it. Uh, be what we mentioned earlier, where that if one if we're doing it based off happiness, if one person just loves 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 having slaves, you know, that's we kind of end up with stuff that maybe we don't like. It's a flawed, it's a flawed ideology. Yeah, no, well, yeah, this is the problem. Yeah, with we just jumped in. Is, is you can't restrict yourself to an ideology because all of them are flawed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so. You, this is why this is why ethics is such a large field of study and why philosophy in general is such a large field of study is because there is no real answer to any of these questions because it's going to vary based on, on on the opinions and the perspective of the uh, of every person um and so yeah i mean it's 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 very complicated where do you but, stand but, yeah no it kind of takes this uh, attempt to to utilitarianism can kind of be viewed as like trying to be the objective lens on an argument although the objective lens again will shift from person to person but it's your own personal objective lens in a way you're trying to put numbers on things that are very hard to put numbers on basically exactly. is what it is yeah yeah so 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 that's utilitarianism at its at its core is is then based off of your valuation of the outcomes of any given action, you're supposed to pick the one that is the best, that gives the most value. And that that is the moral action, no matter what the path is to that, to that consequence, you know, the one that provides the most value is the moral act, uh, is the moral action. Like the good I mean, place. Yes, exactly like the good place. No, exactly. Was, if you've watched the good place, you probably like, have an idea of <laughs> Unless there is like a strict universal code of like in the good place, right and wrong, it is so deeply like boils down to perspective on so many things. And so what one person will look at is like, oh, this is the right code of how to live your life. How would you get the most happiness out of it? It's the morally right thing to do. Someone else could vastly disagree with it. And then it Absolutely. creates, yeah. it's, it, it's not necessarily like a set good in the way that people it, it sort of does push the problem one step back of like oh okay let's have numbers but what are okay now yeah what? now how yeah. do we how do you how do you gauge what is worth more value in the end at the end of the day like if it does my life have more value if i have two married parents does my life have more value if i um, from uh, wealthier, like wh wh where, where does the value come in? To, if that makes any sense, what, how do we determine? So anyone who decides and on the value of points is going to have biases. And this is also, and yeah, no, absolutely. And this is something that utilitarianism kind of tr 
tries to address in a sense that there is a separate theory called egoism, which is about utilitarianism, but just for you. <laughs> which is basically well, trying to game theory. Yeah, exactly. No. But all, utilitarianism, you're it's supposed all game to try theory. to consider <laughs> the greatest good for the greatest number of people. But again, obviously, what you consider to be good and what you consider to be most important will change based based on based on the person. I, I, like, I mean, that's at the end of the day, like, everything does boil so deeply down into like, I, I can't see the world from anyone else's lens. And my lens is like deeply shaped by my experiences and the things that I believe are like, uh, con like, there are things I concretely believe will forever be wrong. And things I concretely believe will forever be right. And I it's so interesting that there are such different perspectives on things that I believe are so like, straightforward and uh, with everyone else as well there's some things that everyone just believes in like oh that's just a base of humanity and then someone else will go eh, i don't know about that yeah hmm. no absolutely so uh this feels like a, a good point to to make a little uh, a little bit of a shift and move towards deontological theories uh which is kind of not necessarily opposite but fundamentally opposed perspective uh, like it's it's I wouldn't it's complicated, but it's it's uh, basically beginning to explore Kantianism, which is duty based ethics, um, which uh, so basically Kant came along and was like, no, no, you're wrong. Except he actually came first, so the other guys were like, no, Kant's wrong. But uh, basically, Kant's moral philosophy firmly opposed to utilitarian utilitarianism principles, but rather is grounded in the idea that. It, Kant is very difficult to define his philosophy because it's very complicated and not concrete in the slightest. Utilitarianism is pretty easy to grasp because, you know, it's, it's this, this checks and balances, but Kant's theories are very abstract in a sense. Uh, and so Kant has essentially said that, that we have a duty to other rational beings. Uh, and so how you define a rational being again is another is another issue. But it, it states that we have a duty uh, 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 to rational beings and that duty embodies the idea that we should do the right thing with in the right spirit. So with the right intents. So an action done from duty does it has moral worth, not because of the purpose of the action or not because of what the outcome of the action was, but according to why the action was performed. So the intent behind the action defines its morality. And so then again, defining this duty is very complicated because there are, there are a bunch of principles that, that dictate this duty. And there's, you know, there's universe, universality, there's uh, humanity, but these are like, this is very complex. <laughs> um, so essentially the idea of universality is that uh, I should never act in a way in such uh, that, oh, what is it? You can't act in a way that your, you, your maxim could also become a universal law, I think, uh, which is a very hard sentence to break down. Um, but it's known as Kant's categorical imperative, which all of, his, all of his imperatives are categorical. Categorical basically means there are no exceptions to this rule. There's no bending of the rule. You can't, you can't break the rule, whatever the rule may be. Uh, and so the, the idea of universality is that if you can't rationalize it, oh, geez, it's so hard to explain. There are entire undergrad university classes just discussing Kantian philosophy and trying to figure out what, what, he, uh, what he meant uh, and, and how to interpret uh, his. But essentially, you can't, if it was not acceptable for everyone else to do, you can't do that. So if you were to kill a person, somebody else may be, mm. may be like, no, that's not cool. You shouldn't kill people. And so, so the idea that you shouldn't kill people is generally, I would say, universally accepted and thus is a rule in our society defined by Kantian ethics that you should not kill people because everybody agrees, all rational beings can agree that killing people is, is bad. Like if you're the only person to commit tax fraud, 
then it's a victimless crime. But if everyone does it, then it causes problems. Kind of? Is it, it, wait, so it's based, okay, I'm, I'm about to say it in the worst, most dumbed down way physically possible. But are you essentially saying kind of like um, that the, 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 the ethics of our decisions is determined by the masses, by the group perspective? I, I like I, I'm very much trying to wrap my mind it's around. Less, it. It's like it's it boils less down that. To it, it's more the idea that there are. It isn't like a situation based thing. Like utilitarianism is like okay, let's look at this is how it ends up versus this is how it also could end up, which is better. What what he's describing is more of a there is a rule, and if this rule is true, it is true for everyone all the time. Yeah, it's like a universal. There, there are laws, there are truths beyond us, beyond the yeah. situation that always apply. Is sort of what is being described here. No, ab absolutely. And so, again, it's it's a it's a very nuanced ethical theory in that sense, where it's and then and then there's also the 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 issue um, where uh, if you if you break uh, so there's this idea that a universally acceptable thing if if it was oh here let me see how can I there do there is also uh, sorry um something that uh francis has brought up and i i was thinking about earlier but i couldn't figure out a way to articulate it between if something in uh in if the intent is all that matters in morality then the difference between the morality of it and the execution of it like if someone's intent if someone believes that life is pain and in killing someone they are doing them a service then in their perspective that the is problem, the problem moral. is i think in in that case is is the way that that we define universability in the sense of uh, agreed upon by rational beings i guess would yeah. kind of be the reconciling with that is that that person does not have a rational perspective right in that and if, but like the difference between someone's intention and the actual uh effect of it being like if someone decides to stop in the middle of the highway because there's a group of ducks waddling past uh because they believe that's the right thing to do and they're doing that because they think it's moral and they feel it's moral and their intention is moral but it's just so dumb <laughs> i grandma i want to pause you here i think that you are latched onto the wrong part of this. So these <laughs> these systems are not specific. Like these are not designed to be like, oh, I mean, we agree, murder is universally wrong. Yeah. But it's like, that's not inherent to the system. It's just that we are saying that the, the system says that there are things that are universally wrong. Yeah, it's an application rather right. than... Okay. And what you're kind of saying about you, and it doesn't, this doesn't assume that everyone has the same system it's saying that you if you want to be ethical you have to live in a way that if, if, if you follow this you can't be a hypocrite basically right if, if there is an ethical law that's true for you you have to apply it universally yeah no exactly and so the way that this can be kind of construed sometimes is you know if you were to take an individual maxim that could not become a universal moral law like for example if you say I usually break my promises, then you're uh, acting according to the idea that promise breaking is morally acceptable when it is in your best interest mm -hmm. to do so. But can you take that principle and transform it into a universal law? And if you were to express this as a universal law, it would be, you know, it is allowed for everyone to break promises when it is in their best interest to do so. But if that became a, a law, that would be invalid because that's a logical contradiction because universal promise breaking is is then there's no such thing as a promise and so making a promise would lack credibility and then as soon as it became a universal law it would it, this maxim would destroy itself it it, mm. it would be non it, it wouldn't be worth anything it, it doesn't mean anything anymore and so the idea is that all of your mm. your ideas have to follow this principle that they can be applied broadly and not fall apart as well right Right, your if you think something is moral on your own, you can't you can't think something is moral uh, if it's only moral for you to do it. Yes. Yeah. 
Absolutely. That is it. And, and so uh, under Kant, in, uh, you can see that, you know, lying is a strictly prohibited, like in that sense, you know, if everybody was to lie, if it was okay well, to lie. I about feel like you thing, can also articulate a difference between like a white lie and an actual lie. But, but, the, but the deal with Kant is he says, this is a categorical imperative. There are mm. no breaking the rules in any circumstance. Mm. That's, that's the whole point, Graham. That that's the whole point, is you're not allowed to make a white lie. But, because, because but you're one could say that, that yes, there no is no, there is no exception to yes, lying is wrong. And if there is, then it fucks the whole thing up. But telling a kid that Santa is real uh, is like, I feel like, I feel like there is an art, well, there is a difference well, that you can yeah. articulate that means but, it's a different category. Absolutely. But then, just, you, just, but then you would be not arguing as a general thing, but just theory. for lying. I feel like there one could separate those categories. So that is a, that is one of the primary criticisms of Kantian theory. So you're 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 getting right on that. Where where you know <laughs> Kant is is very rigid. There's no there's no room there's no wiggle room in Kant theory for for anything. Because it's it's categorical imperative. It's it's. You can ask him if you can, but he would just say no. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But uh, and then there's the principle of humanity, which is another fundamental part of Kant's theory, which basically means that you have to respect other human beings, and that you define whether a being deserves respect because of their rationality and freedom, Uh, and this autonomy is what Kant. defined as as kind of separating personhood from not personhood uh and so uh, again principle of humanity pr- principle of universal universality and then the categorical categorical imperative are like the core ideas of kant's theory where again it's all about you have to perform an act uh, rest in peace <laughs> Did we lose him? We'll be back in a moment. Are you guys seeing the Busy comments? sleeping. You take that back. <laughs> you take that back. Where? <laughs> Toby and Wyatt look exactly the same. <laughs> you take that back. <laughs> no, Toby looks Toby looks exactly halfway between me and you. I can see it. it I cannot see the primarily the twinness in Toby and Graham when they laughed. Um, I've heard that as well before. Uh, Cameron's phone died. <laughs> oh, oh no. Cameron, I think come now back. we can talk about the important things. So <laughs> let's talk about Now that he's fighting. gone. Let, let's talk about theory. A game theory. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about why monks are not overpowered and um any DM who tries to ban them is lying to you. Why what is? Bugs? Monks. Oh. <laughs> I heard that monks were underpowered. Uh, they are, but DMs don't like them, so they try to ban them sometimes because, like, oh, they're overpowered. They're not. Uh, check this out. Uh, uh, Malcolm got a 3D printer. Oh, oh my goodness, saw, it's so cool. That. This is my this is my Warforged Artificer. It's my favorite character I've played. Uh, it's, a, it's a Battlesmith Artificer, uh, and we... We flavored it so that uh, it's it's uh, familiar or whatever. It's it's robot is actually a part of its body, so like it can suck its fucking hand. Anyway, we uh, did... we use. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, did um, t- I I don't I did um to to Graham. I would assume <laughs> did um Toby ever show you this drawing of Sir Connus I made? I don't think so. No. Are you ha- okay, I'm so proud of it. I have to show it to you. So I, it, it's I, it's so good. I put so much time into it. I'll have to sh- I'll have to send it to you. Talk to your content for our campaign. We've just been using um, all of our Gloomhaven stuff because mm. it's basically the same, right? Like that's smart. And we have now a million little figures. You know, they're all painted. They're all cool as hell. Oh, awesome. Oh, oh, yes, he did show me. He did show me. It was, yeah. It was wood, you got a wood cut of it, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. got a little a block of wood. I liked um, it. it was good. Uh, welcome, Jason. What's your favorite philosophical theory? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I've been listening for quite a while. 
My yeah, I've seen, I've seen you in the chat. Chase, and I liked, I liked your bottom joke earlier. That was good. Thank you. And you guys did that just the exact same Yours, time. let me just say, yours was funnier. We, we went for different, we went for different approaches uh, on that, <laughs> but I, I appreciated yours. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. How do I fix my lights? No, I can't. Okay. Well, philosophical theory. Um, and if, if you were to explain I thought, well, I think I what a one. philosophical theory was to someone, what would you say? I would say go to Wikipedia and then next call. <laughs> so true. Come back. <laughs> so true. Um, what were we going to, what, we had a bunch of things on our to talk about list, I think. Cameron was kind of leading the discussion. He was, he was I have a fun, I have a fun game theory one we could do if you want. Let's do, yeah, please, please. Uh, this is a, this is called, I think it's Newton's Paradox. Let me just make sure I have that right. Uh, yeah. So game theory has a lot of weird sort of paradoxes and, and stuff going on in it. And it's basically this idea of people are trying to turn decisions into problems, decision making where you can like get the maximal best outcome for whatever you're doing, right? <laughs> almost utilitarian <laughs> it's almost like it's the same thing <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> <clears throat> so newcomb's problem is it's really weird thing so are you saying that you're not saying newcomb newcomb new, com. new wait like comb like, like c-o-m-b yes it's it, it, okay. it's spelled that way I, yes I, i've heard of it but i don't remember what it is um so basically the idea you have you are you are the player and you are given two boxes to choose from you can choose to take one box or both boxes. Mm. One box contains a hundred dollars, oh. right? Just straight up hundred dollars, right. all yours. The other box might contain a million dollars or it might be empty. Um, and you can choose, do you want to take one box or both boxes? And here's, uh, oh and God. if you took the, oh, no. if you take um, one box, it would just be the, um, the mystery one, right? Uh, the hundred dollars you can pick aside alongside the mystery one or not. Mm -hmm. Here's the gimmick. Cause it seems obvious that you take both, right? The person who's loaded the boxes claims to be able to see into the future and says, I will only load it with a million dollars if you do not pick both. And you, you have good faith. <laughs> the solution is not simple. insane. The solution is simple. Every time someone asks me this question, I say, oh, well, Next obviously, color. I'm going to choose. <laughs> no, I'm not going to take both. <laughs> you say, go to Wikipedia. Next caller. <laughs> and then when I, so I always say I'm not going to. And then when it actually happens, I will. I mean, I won't do it. I but anyway, it's just, it, it's just an interesting idea because... The thought is obviously you should take both because it's already decided. They've already loaded up the boxes with money, right? There's no reason why you wouldn't take both. But if the fortune teller and you have on good faith and this person is actually telling the future, if they're right, the people who are making the smart decision end up with less money. Mm. So it's basically mathematicians getting fucked over. Which is why it's funny to me. That, there's <laughs> another one like that, and you might you might know, you might be more familiar with it than I am. Um, but being the 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 betting sequence, where if you apply an equation to it, uh, mathematically you should keep going forever because there's uh, infinite potential gain. Yeah. But really, it's fifty fifty. You lose it every time you make a new bet. Do you, there's do you a know lot the of problems. For that? There's remember. a lot of weird little problems like this where uh, basically if you were to I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's like if you flip it's like it's if you flip I think it's if you flip a coin and you land on heads, it doubles your prize pool. And if you land on tails it goes to zero. Yeah. And you and you can choose to cash out before think. you cash out. Because but, mathematically is, you should never the cash out. Is you should keep going forever. Yeah. If you um, do it, if you solve it mathematically, you should keep going forever. But obviously, that's dumb. What are you solving? Um, we are solving ethics right now. You, we are solving. 
Um, someone All offers the you a bet. They put two dollars on a table and give yeah. you a coin to flip. You flip the coin. Uh, if it lands on heads, uh, that two dollars doubles. If it lands on tails, you get nothing. You can right. flip the coin as many times as you want. How many times, assuming you keep getting heads, should you go before mm -hmm. you cash out? Mm -hmm. Because mathematically, you should keep going forever. Uh, because there's infinite potential gain if you keep going. Yeah. Uh, and there's zero loss. Girl. It's it's a strange one because I don't is there is there own there's no way to actually solve it. There's no defined there's no good answer to it, I think, right? It's just you have to use your best judgment. <laughs> yeah. You still play. Well yeah, no, there's no math in that, I don't think. I would simply just not play. Yeah. I'm rich. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably flip it three times. Three? Why three? Eight dollars is <laughs> That's a lot of money. Cheeseburger. <laughs> it's expensive cheeseburger. <laughs> Green, I you're getting ripped yeah. off, man. I can. Yeah, I think we should Depends on the cheeseburger. Go hey, to look, you, you talk to me. You you buy it for me for eight dollars. I'll make a three dollar profit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, what else are we going to talk about? I want to do a very honest image. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> It's insane. It's insane. The universe shouldn't exist. We don't know why it does. I think we should talk about our favorite Graham Brashear movies. Mine oh, is so true. Lemoncello's Library. I haven't seen it. I, I like My it. Little Pony. I wasn't you, in any of the movies. You Good taste. Or, I don't care if you're um, in the movie. Was... Didn't they make a movie where they were people? Yes. Yeah. No, no. I, Actually, I, we have this talk. Let's have this talk. Who is <laughs> Lydia? Who is the best pony? <laughs> Who's the best? That's a loaded question. Okay, so I used to. Oh, if in, you say Pip Squeak, we're gonna call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Graham. In middle school, I was really into My Little Pony, and so I specifically identified with Twilight Sparkle as a sixth grader. So I'm gonna have to say Twilight. Respectable. I did. I have this, um, and I think it was probably September. Um, I was trying to find a movie with my good friend Toby to watch, and he ended up putting on the new My Little Pony movie. And oh, there was yes. a lot of like, like World War II imagery in the recent one. It was very strange what? for a My Little Pony movie. And he kept calling one of the ponies a bottom the entire film, and it was who? really uncomfortable. Who? 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 Toby kept calling a pony a bottom. Who? Which one? <laughs> um, it was the. It was I, okay. It was the. It was the one that the World War Two imagery was centered around that reminds us of a certain political figure. That I don't. <laughs> Sorry, I need. I need to stop this right here. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I need. I need. I need to clarify because I haven't seen this. Are you implying? Are you telling me? <laughs> <laughs> right now, that there is a Hitler pony. <laughs> There's a Hitler pony in My Little Pony's recent one. There's a lot of and 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 that Toby called him a bottom. Would... Yeah, and Toby did continuously call him a bottom throughout the film. You know, I think that if we had called Hitler a bottom, <laughs> we were... I think maybe he would have stopped. He would have stopped. <laughs> It was a. <laughs> oh, God. They uh, they didn't actually do that, did they? The the Hitler pony. Yeah. Did they actually no, that, do that? I can show you the screenshots. It's like I have multiple videos of me and Toby in the background talking about the pony because it was very wow. baffling. No, it was genuinely it's very baffling. Really gone I downhill since just, I was in it. The imagery <laughs> was very distinctive. Like it was, it caught me off guard to the degree of how like it was, there was a lot of parallels specifically cause they rose up a pony army. It was like the leader of the generals and they would like walk, they would like walk with the kind of like lines that you typically, like in the Lion King when they did like the, the, the parallels with Scar and his hyenas. It was very similar in the imagery. Was it the goal? What? Was it like the goal? Well, the, the movie was kind of about like 
the separate the separation of like the alicorns and then not the alicorns the, the unicorns the pegasuses and the like normal ponies and so like the, 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 the unicorns i think no it was the um, it was the it was the the normal ponies were like rising against like the others, and he was leading them to like not unite them. Everything. Which made there the was a race war in My Little Pony. <laughs> because it's like you know in the future, and they're all separated into their different kingdoms. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm sorry. I I don't think I was ready to handle the torrent of information just through it. I wasn't prepared to watch it. In, in the in the last. <laughs> We signed up for an intense philosophical discussion. This is <laughs> this is and too much. I want to backtrack. I want to describe to you the three things I just learned. <laughs> One, there is a movie about a My Little Pony race war. Yeah. yeah that's Two, the context. <laughs> one of those ponies is Hitler. Okay. And three, he's a bottom? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna pull up a photo. Do you have a picture? Is I'm he actually a bottom? Um, I... I I can't remember. Let me let me remind. Um, My Little Pony, Pony. Um. Wait, we're gonna find. Oh, this one. This one. This was the pony. Um, let me. This one. Um. Um. <laughs> here he is. His name is Sprout. This is him. He's um. Let me let me find a photo of Sprout leading. That's the, the bottom. Sorry, did you see this? Yeah. Sprout. Wait. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. I was too distracted by. Oh him. my wait, god! Wait. It's, yeah, this it's is this Ken is John. Oh Wait. What? Wow. That's the imagery Sprout. is very. It's very what? specific imagery. Like I'm not joking when I say like he that he's on a pedestal in that moment talking to the pony army. And this was like a legit movie. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Look, like, this was him with the ponies marching behind him. Like, oh, it, the imagery no. was very, ve like, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> it's very specific imagery. Wow. <laughs> <I'm>... Wow. <laughs> no, no, I was not talking to him. You know what? I'm going to take you one like step it. further here. I'm reading about this now. It says he's played by Ken Jeong. <laughs> he absolutely <laughs> is a bottom in that case. Yeah. <laughs> Has anyone watched The Masked Singer? I have not. I've seen I I saw of it. Wayne Brady on it at one point. Yeah, it is wild. It is, um, it's like, I really want to be on it. Like, be in a, a place in my career where I am not getting enough work so that I have to be on The Masked Singer. Because, like, the people that they have, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just stuck here. Putting Wait, that down. go back, go back, go back. <laughs> It says friendship is fascism. Oh, okay. I'm, just gonna I'm putting that down now. But I'm not making it up. Continue. Oh no. No, that's all I had to say about the mass singer. Should we watch the mass singer? There isn't like a, a Nazi arc, right? No. <laughs> well. well, you don't know until the end, right? That's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god. This stream has gone so awful so quickly. I'm so sorry <laughs> yeah, I brought up right. pony racism. It caught me off guard too though. Like, hey, like I didn't expect to sit down and watch it. This is on you. <laughs> no, it's not! Don't blame me for this! Oh my god. It caught- no! And it, it caught me very off guard. And I just, you yeah. <laughs> know. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. I can also sing every word to the song Discord by the Living Tombstone still. It goes so hard and I almost sang it for my talent show in eighth grade. And I'm really glad I did it. Mm. The masked singer is people <laughs> who offer them Okay. Like no one Illuminate makes money like the Rave no. Company? The Illuminati. <laughs> Except spelled <laughs> wrong. Illuminati. Universe and ethics. Oh, it's wow. the French Illuminati. 
No, pause again. I don't like that. Pause again. Hashtag. What do French hashtag. people sound like, Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Just we have the Illuminati. Illuminati. Um, <laughs> that's not French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> um, listen, who's French the one that just part. got proposed to in chat? <laughs> what? <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, guys, actually, Graham was so excited to tell me because he's a DM for his campaign, and he was working on all of these, like, Dungeons & Dragons voice character voices. So, Graham, I think it'd be really, really good to show. Why don't you show us just some of your accents? I think it'd be really, really good. Oh, you're workshopping. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, Graham, why don't you do... <laughs> what do you think, Jason? What, what should we make him do? <laughs> well, are there specific characters he's already set? Oh, he's, he's, really he's practiced no. everything. We can really go. <laughs> Graham, can you give us your Bane impression? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um oh what's a bane line? Uh um, <laughs> just say Batman. <laughs> Batman <laughs> I was <laughs> Graham, that's just your voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. Put, I put the mask on. <laughs> no. <laughs> you might not believe this, Jason, but in The Dark Knight Rises, famously, Tom Hardy <laughs> wasn't doing a voice. It's just the, his hands did that. I thought that was Channing Tatum. <laughs> Bane? It's Tom Hardy? I thought it was Tom Hardy. Is it actually? I, I could be wrong. That was Tom. I didn't think it was either of those guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was just some guy. Yeah, uh, it's, it's Tom Hardy. I think that this is a conversation about Tom Hey, Wyatt, do you yeah. think you can do your Wicked Witch of the West? Uh, my roommates are sleeping, so no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's wild. Oh. Mm. <sighs> I can't oh, but do you were telling me. You were telling me about, about your Transylvanian vampire accent. <laughs> You're like, your vampire? I think you should really... Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you give us that one? Uh, I need to get my fucking widow's peak. <laughs> um. <clears throat> <laughs> How do you do it, dude? You can't do this to me. What are you doing? I, do, I can't even. I can't even imagine what that sounds like. <laughs> like it's not. Good. <laughs> it's like the most basic accent. Still doing Oh, nice. could you show me then, and I'll I'll do yeah, I'll please. do it from. It's not for you, please. I am Shoot. a vampire. I feel like it's pretty close to Russian. It's it's amazing, guys. Vampire. This is acting right here. If you just say what you are, I want to I suck, your suck your blood. Do you want to? Do you guys want to see? This is my um, this is my Obi Wan Kenobi impression from Star Wars. Ready? I am Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Actually, oh that was God, a bit that Toby and I had. Star Wars. <laughs> that was a bit that Toby and I had for a bit was introducing yourself as Barack Obama and just doing a terrible like an impression of someone else <laughs> he could do it a lot better than I could well can you show us? show us <laughs> <laughs> I need to get Toby to do it <laughs> the you bit all it, it is is just saying like <laughs> hello I'm Barack Obama <laughs> <laughs> and that's it yeah, that's really good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I, I appreciate it. We put a lot of work into it. I I want to reveal something to the class. What I meant by that your kids are all the same is that <laughs> you can just tell them that they're going to do something and they just always do it, <laughs> which is what I'd be trying to demonstrate with this. <laughs> what I found is that if anyone ever takes an improv class ever, at any time, if you know them, you can just tell people that they're going to do something and they do it. My my party trick is making improv kids do party tricks. <laughs> also magic. I make improv kids do magic. <laughs> no, you do magic. I do. You're a party magician. I am. Could you show us some magic tricks? Yeah, sure, ready?
Are you going to flip me off? <laughs> <gasps> you have two now. <laughs> Dumbass, I could see you bend your finger. <laughs> How'd you get killed? Run it. Wait, are you okay? Are you... Oh. <laughs> oh, joking. oh. Joking on it. Uh -huh. Hey! Hey! Yeah. Really good. Beginning, middle, end, really. Yeah. The prestige. Yeah. Man. Graham, Graham do you have I... any magic? Um. <laughs> Why? Just do invisible deck. <laughs> hey, Graham. So Graham, think of a card. Um. Just think of it. Okay. Do you see it here? Uh, no. No. Toby's spitting Where facts. Where could it be? Toby's in with this scorching take. Graham, pig. Graham. <laughs> you didn't see your card there, right? Ready? I didn't, no. Check under your foreskin. Freak. What the f? <laughs> what the he did f? it, guys. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he did it. What the f? Where, is it? <laughs> what the f? Where did you take him? <laughs> Give it back. It's a part of my body. <laughs> and now, Graham, look in the deck of cards where your card was. <laughs> it's your first. <laughs> 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 It's getting late. <laughs> oh. Toby, Toby, I see Toby's in the chat. We were learning about how you called <laughs> you called My Little here? Pony Hitler a bottom. Okay, <laughs> Toby, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out and you join. Oh, oh my God, Vlad, Vlad, I appreciate it so much. He said, okay. "Is the card small or?" <laughs> <laughs> Jason, it's been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> Good to see you, Jason. Much love. <laughs> well. Um. Juicy Figs, you will stay there until I'm good and done with you. That's three what? more days. Three more days. Um, wow. Sorry, Graham, ignore that. A lot of <laughs> Okay. Um, man, uh, we've got to invite Toby. Well, I've invited your good friend Toby to the live. My good friend not... Toby. What a man. Um, we were set on a phys philosophical discussion, but I really, I'm not as well versed in philosophy, so I can't lead it. I, I, I might not know anything about philosophy. But I did memorize the first chapter of Divergent in middle school. So I think I'm pretty qualified. Could you that, recite it for us? That is probably as obnoxious I as I can't remember as much students, of so. it as I used to. But there is one near my house, and it is behind a sliding panel in the hallway upstairs. My faction allows me to stare into it on the second day of every third month the day my mother cuts my hair. I sit on the stool, my mother stands behind me with the scissors trimming. The strands fall on the floor in a dull blonde ring. I note how calm she looks and how focused she is. She is well practiced in the art of losing herself. I can't say the same for myself. And when she isn't paying attention, I sneak a look at my reflection, not for the sake of vanity, but out of curiosity. Okay, I'll. It's, it's, I'm it's, divergent. <laughs> um, that is very impressive. Well I, I used to I used to make my friend hold the book open and tell me what to say and then I'd wrap it in response to memorize it. Wow. That's I'm terrible. Really cool. I'm really cool. Wow, yeah. No, I yeah. respect it. Hey Toby. Graham, here's mine. You ready for this? Okay. Hi, my name is Dark Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, and I have long oh, ebony yeah. black hair. That's how I get my name with purple streaks and red tips that reach mid back when I see the lies of the And people <laughs> tell me I look like Amy Lee. Authors know if you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here. That's all I know about that one. 
Wow. That one's so good, though. Oh, oh, wow. I did. Um, I spent like three weeks trying to memorize the um, the 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 zip line scene in Divergent, so that when I zip lined, I could yell it into the sky because I like in front of my peers. And then I got on the zip line and had a panic attack at the top and made them take me back down. And we've got I one passed. and a half minutes. Oh no! Until what? Um, Toby, Toby, could you uh, do uh, Obama for me? <laughs> Uh-huh. She's a really good impression. This is really a theater of the mind here. <laughs> yeah. I can really see what he's going for. I'm there. Uh, yeah. I feel the emotion. <laughs> I think maybe his microphone isn't working. Yeah, I don't think his mic is working. <laughs> Hey everyone, let's have a round of applause for Toby. Good job. Uh, we have like 20 seconds left before it's going to kick off. Um, until what? Does it kick until, you out? It, there's a time limit for how long you can go live. Oh. Um, yeah, there's like 10 seconds. Uh, this was all. Follow me on Twitter. Until... 